Welcome to the grand new Elocus podcast. This is going to be episode one in this um, massive, massive undertaking, which begins today on the 21st day of the year, 5784. So I'm so excited about this, and uh, I feel this is like divinely guided. <laughs> the purpose of this discourse is uh, elokus means divinity. The purpose of this discourse is to give us all an opportunity to be able to immerse our minds completely into divinity, into godliness. Uh, we're going to be studying a book that is the most comprehensive study of godliness in all of history. Uh, it's a study of the divine, that's what it is. And even though the divine is incomprehensible and unknowable, yet we have a commandment, know the God of your father, love they who believe, Shalom King David, David and Malach says to his son, know the God of your father. We're also told in the verse in Deuteronomy, you should know today um, and you should bring it to your heart that God is the Lord that Hashem is Elohim which means you have to get to know of the divine whatever you can know it's an obligation, it's a mitzvah Rambam in, Lema, in the laws of in his um, numeration of mitzvahs says that the first commandment is leida is to know sheyesham matsurishim that there is a, primi- a, a primal being. And Ramam doesn't say to believe, just to have faith. Faith is, 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 is the very foundation of everything, but we have to bring our faith into understanding. So what is it that we plan on doing over here? What is the book? The book is a series of discourses said by Reb Shalom Dov Ber of Lubavitch, that is the fifth Chabad Rebbe, between the years of... 1912, 50, um, 56, 72, in the year 5,672 to creation. And um, he continued speaking this discourses, these discourses for about four years. That means week after week he delivered one of the maimarim, one of the discourses, which make up this group of discourses. This group is the longest group of discourses that there are as one group in all of Chabad Hasidism. Chabad means, the p- is, is an acronym for the three powers of Chachma, which means understanding, bin- Chachma, which means wisdom, Bina, which means understanding, and um, Das, which means knowledge. It's the entranceway. It's the Chabad is the... the uh, the discipline, the science, so to speak, of the divine. The Chabad Rabbeim, which span a seven generations, from the, uh, the, the late 1700s all the way till current times. The seven Chabad Rabbeim, their main uh, being, their main uh, uh, shlichus, their main um, purpose, which God sent them to this world, was to channel the inner light of the Torah, to teach the world how to know God, thereby opening up the world for Mashiach, for the time of the redemption. In which Rambam says, Lo kola oilom kule. Maimonides says, the occupation of all of the world will not be for anything else other to know God. So as a pre- preparation for the knowledge of God that is going to be at the in the Messianic times, we were given seven generations really it begins already from the beginning of the torah god ma- starts to make himself known to the world but as we get closer to the messianic age this information becomes more and more and more available through the great teachings of all of jewish mysticism the great kabbalists the most uh, important ones to note were Reb Shimon Bar Yochai the author of the Zohar who lived close to 2,000 years ago, right after the destruction of the Second Temple, followed by another great master, Rabbi Isaac Luria, Rabbi Yitzhak Luria, known as the Ari, so to speak, the one who developed Kabbalah more than anybody else before him. 
but, uh, but that's Kabbalah. And then came the Holy Baal Shem Tov and introduced Hasidism. Hasidism is the soul of all of Kabbalah. It's the inner light of it. It's much, it's the, it's the, it, if, if Kabbalah is the map, this is the experience. Hasidus is the experience. But in Hasidism itself, the Holy Baal Shem Tov revealed the powerful lights of Hasidus, but he did not channel it down to the mind. He allows us to experience it in our soul, but not through our human side, not through our cognitive understanding. And this was the job of the third generation of Hasidism, Rav Shneir Zalman of Riyadi, and he begins the process of funneling this otherwise unknowable godliness into the mind that the mind with our human powers of our logic and understanding should be able to conceive the inconceivable. Within Chabad Hasidus, Hasidic, Hasidic discourses were said. The Rebbe's, the Rabbeim, the Chabad masters would say a discourse. Usually it was on Shabbos, on Saturdays, and on special holidays and on other special occasions. And um, But these discourses were like said as individual discourses. After four general meaning, each discourse was a subject onto its own. But then came the fourth generation of Chabad rebbe's, with the um, the, uh, the 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 rebbe Reb Shmuel of Lubavitch, and he introduced. He began the concept called a hemshech. A hemshech means that he would say a series of discourses that would like kind of link together to form one idea. The, the greatness of that was that you're able to go much deeper into elucidating and explaining something because you're not limited to one delivery. You can build on various different um, phases, class one, class two, class three, and so on and so forth. So he said some hemshechem, some of these string together discourses, and some were longer, some were shorter. But the average, con- and from him and onward, from the fourth Rebbe, the fifth Rebbe, the sixth Rebbe, and the seventh Rebbe, we had the concept of ha- a hemshech, which means a stringed, a series of discourses, where you have a concept that runs through many, many discourses. Now, even the long one, the, the average discourses will be from six to ten the average um, Hemshechem series would be six to ten discourses. Then came the fifth Chabad Rebbe, who says many of these stringed Reb Shalom Dev Ber, who said many of these lengthy discourses over periods of time, but even to him, the longest one, which was like phenomenal, and it's like a, a fundamental, it's the foundation of understanding Chabad Hasidism, contains 61 discourses okay this is the one that he said in 56 60 in the year 5666 known as Tafresh Samach Vav and that one however contains 61 discourses that was a whopper okay now just to keep this in perspective the discourse that we are going to study now which is called Vishosha Shehigdimu Tafresh Ayin Beis, again, that was said in 1912, was his last, I think it was his last Hemshech, his last series of discourses, and this was his prize discourse. This is what he invested his life, so to speak, into producing it. And just to get an understanding of the awesomeness of it, it's a stringed series of 144 discourses long. And it took the Rebbe four years. It took him four years from 1912 till 1915. There, I'm saying four years, even though that's only three years, because in the Hebrew calendar, it's four years. From the June of 1912, which is the year 5672, until October, November time of the year 5676. So from 72 to 5676, six, about three and a half years in which the Rebbe spent delivering almost every week another one of these discourses. And what's even more amazing is even when he completed saying he didn't finish and he continued writing and left manuscripts to complete the idea. So it's really, really even much longer.
altogether 144 fascinated discourses. And what it really is, is an absolute astounding exploration into divinity. The understanding the entire realm of Hishtal Shalut, the entire evolution of worlds as they emerge from God, and the purpose of all of creation and all of existence, our interaction with God, how we fulfill the purpose, all this is discussed in a phenomenal way that has never been discussed in Chassidus before. Why are we learning this? Now, I have to say something before I begin. I'm not an expert in this, in this uh, particular Hemshech. I, uh, for those who know, you know who I am, my name is uh, Ruven Wolf. You might call me Rabbi Ruven Wolf. I teach Hasidus for many, many years. Go for about 25 years, but 15 years as part of the center, my Yisrael in Hasidic Center in Los Angeles. And, um, but even before that, for many years, giving classes primarily in Chabad Hasidism. And I noticed something interesting. My, my knowledge of Hasidus was very limited until I started teaching. When I undertook upon myself to teach, it forced me to learn. And in the same sense, I'm doing right now. I never even learned this, this discourse. I am learning it now publicly on a podcast because that's going to force me and compel me and it's going to discipline me to stay to it. I'm very excited because um, there's nothing greater than saturating your mind with pure divinity. I have no doubt. Those of you that will join this podcast and will study daily with me, I plan on doing this five or six days a week. I'm not promising six, but I'm going to try to commit a Bali Neder, which means without a promise, to five of them a week. Each episode is going to be not more than a half an hour. Okay, so we're going to keep it to less to a half an hour, and but not exceeding a half an hour. And uh, how long is this commitment for? Meaning to what? If you're signing up to this study. So first of all, you don't have to learn the entire thing. Even if you learn a discourse or two discourses or three discourses. Um, that's amazing. Even if you just join us for one podcast, you get a taste of it. Uh, if you're signing up to study the whole thing, um, it's possible that if you are in your 20s, you might we might conclude it w- and you're not married yet that you can expect to have grandchildren by the time we're done. <laughs> this is not a quick exploration. This is something we're going to study for years to come because what the Rebbe said in one discourse might take us uh, 10, 15 classes to complete one discourse. We have 144 of them. Maybe even, I don't know, we're going to see how many it's going to take as we start teaching, as we start learning together. But one thing I can assure you is that the, ex- the, the, the exhilaration of being, first of all, the fulfillment of the greatest mitzvah. The Zohar says that the greatest mitzvah and the greatest thing a person can do, the reason we were created is to come to know God. There is no study of the knowledge of God that is even comparable close to this discourse. So much so that the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the seventh Chabad Rebbe, the Lubavitcher Rebbe from, who was responsible for printing all the teachings of Chabad Hasidism and bringing them into print and disseminating them this is the Rebbe's deepest desire was that the teachings of Hasidism which is the deepest of the teachings of godliness to reach the entire world and the Rebbe was printing and printing and printing it all these were all hidden treasures they were hidden by him he was a but notwithstanding his great urgency to print everything he didn't print this discourse and the reason simply was as the Rebbe himself said in the d- in when he spoke Tavshin Lamed Zion which is in the year 50 737, 1976 it was, at a Fabrengen on the 19th of Kislev. The Rebbe then, when the Rebbe spoke, the Rebbe explained how he was afraid to, to, to print this discourse. Because this is godliness exposed to the world like never before. This is the highest level of divine transmission that we've had until we're going to see the revelation of Mashiach in terms of a comprehensive study of the divine. So that like, li- and as we know that in the earlier generations, whenever godliness was revealed through someone, it, the, it, that person placed themselves in great danger because the uh, forces of that want to block godliness will, God forbid, try to prosecute and get in the way. 
So the Rebbe, you can see at that Fabrengen said, I am now going to do something that I was afraid to do until this time. And it was so amazing that the Rebbe then said that he is asking um, he, he, that in order to take away the responsibility just on his, on his own, that it shouldn't be only his responsibility, should land squarely on him, the Rebbe then said that I, I want to share it with all of the Hasidim. And the Rebbe asked everybody to contribute, to be part in the responsibility. By doing what? That they should, everybody should participate in the cost of the printing. But the Rebbe specifically said, I don't want you to fund it. I want everybody to share the responsibility of printing it. That I'm not the one printing it. We're printing it, all of us together as Hasidim. The entire group of his followers, we're doing it. So we can share the responsibility together. And obviously the Hasidim as a whole would be withstand any type of accusation. The Rebbe then asked that people should give a dollar. He doesn't want more than one dollar. Every person a dollar. But the Rebbe then gave permission that people can give for their wives and for all their children. Even a baby that was just born can participate if a dollar will be given for them. At that Fabrengen, Hasidim were emptying their pockets and giving dollar bills, passing it on. And by the way, the Rebbe then announced the project has already begun because I, and the Rebbe said his name and his mother's name, I have, I have given a dollar as well. So it's all of us together giving this. This how shows us how awesomely high this is, that it was such a danger to bring this light to the world. But this light is already here in this world for so many years in the print form, but for the English-speaking audience, this, these discourses are not printed in English. There were some rabbis and teachers who began teaching it, and uh, I'm sure they have a great merit. I want to do that as well in this podcast called the Elokus Pat Podcast. Now, for a lengthy explanation on the background of this discourse and its incredible story, including what I just mentioned, just a tiny little bit of it, I plan, Bezrat Hashem, today to do on YouTube a video um, and explaining the entire story. Uh, I also will add over there a phenomenal little um, tidbit that godly event that happened in my personal life in the last, discovered to me last night and today in the morning, which is just, to me, is just mind-blowing for myself, why, where I'm seeing that Hashem, that from above, they're kind of encouraging me to do this. I will add that in that story that I will share Bezrat Hashem and I will attach the link to this podcast um, if not for today's then to tomorrow's Bezrat Hashem so you can follow that link we will also be attaching a link if you want to follow along I'm going to be reading this it's going to be textual study so I'm going to be reading from inside if you want to follow the text again the text is in Hebrew but you'll have a link you can print it out for yourselves as we shall begin. Okay, and now, ready to start. Asiyat HaDashmaya, with God's help, Chag HaShavuos. This discourse was said on the holiday of Shavuos, which is the upcoming holiday, the holiday in which God gave the Torah to the, to, to the Jewish people. Tav Resh Ayin Beis, or like he calls it over here, Terav, which really means sweetness, but the acronym of the year is five the year 5,672 to creation. And um, which, as we said earlier, is in 1912. Here we go. At the time when he begins by quoting a passage of the Talmud. Masech the Shabbos, tractate Masech the Shabbos, on page 88, on the first side of the page. It's a, there it discusses um, in, a, in an elaborate form the giving of the Torah, what happened at Sinai in the year uh, 20, in the year 2448 from creation when God took us out of Egypt and brought us to the foot of Mount Sinai. So the Talmud there elaborates about the giving of the Torah. So there it says the following statement. At the time when the Jewish people um, said, now by the way, just, just, just a note, the 
manner in which the Chabad Rabbeim said, would say a discourse, was almost in the manner that they're downloading godliness. And they said it with a special, with a very deep dveikus. They were very deeply, you know, their mind, they were in deep meditation. And you can see on their faces that they were not in this world, they were channeling. And they would say it with a traditional tune. So Hasidim, when we learn, we learn with this, with, with this kind of tune that, that the Rebbe's would say the Maimah. So if you're wondering about the tune that I'm using in the actual reading, it's because the Rebbe's used that kind of, a, that, that, that tune. So here we start again. At the time when the Jewish people prefaced, we will do it, we will do, and we will hear. What does that mean? So that means that we take a look in, in, in Shemos, in Exodus. This is not in where people would, 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 would um, generally look for. If you want to see the story of the giving of the Torah, we would look in Parshas Yisro. Now this is the next Torah portion, Parshas Mishpatim. And over there it says that um, at the conclusion of, the, of, the, of Parshas Mishpatim, it says that when Moses, when Moshe comes down the mountain and he, and, he, and, he, and he presents God's offer, that he wants to give them the Torah, it says that the Jewish people responded, we will do and we will hear. And the people answered, I think it says, with one voice, Nase v'nishma. We will do and we will hear. In other words, whatever you want, God, we're, we're willing, we're in, we're in. That's what they said. They said, we will do and we will hear. So it says that God got very excited about that. The fact that they said, we will do and we will hear, that gave Hashem so much satisfaction. What happened? Um, Yardu Malachi Hashares, the Malachim, the angels, the, uh, what, what we would call Malachi Hashares, means the officiating angels. The angels that attend to the to God, it would seem like these are the highest angels. These are angels that stand directly in in front of Hashem, in front of God, to to uh, serve Him. So these angels descended from heaven, the Kashrulam Shnei Sarim, and they tied for every single Jew two crowns. Okay, so the Jewish people were crowned. Echot Keneged Naseh. One of them corresponded to this that they said, Nasa, we will do the Echot Keneged Nishma. And one of them corresponded to this that they said, we will hear. So because they said, we will do, God, we will, we will, we will, we will, we will do the mitzvot that you're commanding us, the commandments. And we will hear, we will listen to them, we will study them, we will understand them. So they received, they merited to get two crowns, which the angels came down from heaven and brought them those crowns. Okay. Who and the Im implication of the idea is is this that the crowns were given to them, whom it's because they prefaced and they said first we will do and we will hear. In other words, by this that they said first, in other words, meaning the main uh, excitement above wasn't that they said we will do, and it wasn't that they said that they will listen but rather the order in which it was said. We will do and we will listen. Seeming to imply that had they said it in the opposite order, which is, w we will listen, we will hear, and then we will do. Then, in that sense, they would not have gotten these crowns. The crowns were given to them because they prefaced, we will do before we will hear. Let's understand that for a moment. The usual, the usual manner in which when you ask somebody, when one asks a, of another person for any kind of a favor or for anything I'm asking of you to do, the way, the usual it is first, you know, if you, if you need help from someone, you need assistance, the person is an important individual, you reach out to them, you send them an email, you ask for a meeting. Can I have an appointment? Whether it's a meeting in person, whether it's a meeting on, by phone. Now the very fact that they give you the meeting that's already something. What does that mean? I will listen. Come by. We'll have coffee. I'll come by to my office. I'll hear you out. That's the meaning of nishma. Let me hear. Now, doesn't mean that I'm committing to fulfill your request. I'll hear what you're asking. I'll then I'll make a decision. But that's already a big accomplishment. We will hear. The fact that I'm available to hear. And then the next thing is, Manasseh, we will do. I will do, meaning, if 
you know, you present your, 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 your uh, presentation, you present your uh, request. Um, well, and the person decides that he, he, he likes the cause or whatever it is, whether you're asking for funding for something or some other kind of a help. And then they say, yes, you know what, here it is. I will, I will, I will grant your request. So that's the second part. That's Nasa we will do. So when God is looking to give the Torah, actually the sages said, tell us that God went around to all the nations and God tried and the nations didn't even want to hear. <laughs> or actually they did say, they said, give us one commandment, give us a taste. What is it all about? And the angel presented to the nations uh, what uh, uh, the, 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 you know, one of one commandment, a taste. And the nations thought about it and they said, no, this is too hard for us. We're not, we're not going to do it. So about the Jewish people, instead of the Jewish people saying, let us give us a taste, tell us what it's all about, we'll give you a meeting, we'll, we'll, we'll lend you our ears, and then we will sit down, we will have a conference, and we will decide if we're willing to listen. The Jews stunned the God, so to speak, by saying, we will do and we will hear. Meaning, like you call for, you, you ask for a meeting, the person says, you don't even have to have a meeting. Just send me the request and it, consider it done. Whatever you're asking, it is done. That's it. That's what got God, got, got God so excited. They said the Nasa before the Nishma. So this is what it implies in the Medrash. Let me re let's read it inside. And the explanation of the matter is the Mash and Itmu and Maksarim, this that they received the crowns because they said first we will do before we will listen but if they would have said first but if they would have placed a little filter in front of God and they would say not so fast we're willing to give you a meeting God we're willing to hear tell us what it's all about then we will decide if we will do it then they would not have received they would not get the crowns. Now, does that mean they wouldn't get any of the crowns? Or maybe they would get one of the crowns? We'll see about that tomorrow. And the reason why they wouldn't get the crowns is because the listening is for the sake of the doing. Meaning, the listening definitely doesn't deserve an, an individual crown because the entire listening you can't do without the listening. So the listening is a prerequisite for the doing, so it's considered part of it. Uh, but as Rosh Hashem, we will explain this in tomorrow. We will be getting much more into the discourse to in the next episode. Today's was a lot of an introduction, so please join us again. Tell your friends about it. This grand, this grand, this brand new project, amazing godly project called the Elokus Podcast. And um, let's be ready for Mashiach.